Live from the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio, this is SGTV News 4. Welcome to Friday Morning Live. Coming up this morning, impacts of the coronavirus may hit closer to home than we think. More to come later on. Also, students are being evicted from an off-campus apartment complex. We've got the details coming up later in the show. And finally, USC football fans are getting excited about new commits. All this and more coming up on this episode of Friday Morning Live. We had some pretty rough storms yesterday, but can we expect any more rain this weekend? Stay tuned for a look at your weekend forecast this time on Friday Morning Live. Gamecocks, I'm Kaylee Olivas. And I'm Allie Catone. Thanks for joining us this morning. Coronavirus concerns have separated USC graduate student and his wife. Ziang Zheng, a PhD student in the College of Hospitality and Retail Management, came to Columbia along with his wife, Jin Wang, on a one-year visa. In early January, Wang flew home to China for scheduled doctor's appointments. Her returning flight was booked for February 26th. But the coronavirus outbreak has triggered a travel ban preventing her from getting back to the states. Though thankfully healthy, Wang is currently quarantined with her family in Shanghai. Zhang fears he may have to wait until April to see his wife again, but says he will continue to have hope that things will resolve quickly. USC officials are working hard to support the over 100 Chinese exchange students in Colombia who may be experiencing similar situations. The Columbia City Council has approved a new city flag design after three years of deliberation. The search for a new design began in 2017 with a contest that saw over 540 entries. A local design studio and print shop called The Half and Half created the winning pattern that features diagonal stripes of blue and white under a six-point star, all in a deep blue background. Mayor Steve Benjamin states that the style elements hold significant meaning for the city. The star reportedly represents Colombia being the capital city and the historical resilience of the city. The stripes symbolize the Saluda and Broad Rivers that meet in Colombia and have played important roles in the city's development. This is the first time the city flag has been changed in over a century. One USC senior is turning his passion for exercise into a business and is attracting some notable clients. SGTV News 4 reporter Forrest Tucker takes a look. College student and CEO, Stevan Rogers is both. Rogers runs his own personal training business, Chosen Uno Training, down at the Village. You told me you, wanted, you started Chosen Uno to help people. Correct. What's the best thing about helping people? Um, just the heart fulfilling that I get from it, like to know that someone comes with me with a set expectation, knowing that I can help them do it, that's just a heart feeling. In 2018, some help from friend Shaylin Simmons gave Rogers some publicity. Simmons helped him spread the word through her sorority, Alpha Delta Pi. So once I knew I was training with Stedman, since our sisterhood is so close and Greek life is, I knew that his training sessions would definitely spread and they would market themselves just by having one Greek Life member in his training sessions already. Over time, Rogers found himself supporting many clients like Kate Lewis outside of the gym. When I was running my campaign, he came to my kickoff party, he came to my tabling on Green Street, he had his little phone pocket on the back of his case telling all his clients to vote. And I think it's just that he takes that extra personal, he takes that extra step to build that personal relationship with his clients that makes him so special and different as a trainer. Rogers runs multiple sessions a day. Thanks to a little help from God and his mom, he is able to stay on track. How do you balance your business? Not a lot of college kids say they have a business. How do you balance your business with schoolwork? Um, I've always been great with time management. And then again, back going back to my family and God, I talk to God and my family every day. And my mom always drills into my mind. You make sure you get your schoolwork done before training. Schoolwork comes before training. And just with my mom always being in my ear and constantly reminding me how important school is, and with me knowing how important training is, it's easy for me to balance it. It's not hard to me. 
As far as achieving fitness goals, client Andrea Moises has reached milestones that she says were only possible with Chosen Uno. Stedman has changed me as a person. Like He has pushed me to do things that I never thought I could do. Um, I think the biggest moment was last spring. We were hitting Strom a few days just because I wanted some extra training. And at one point I hit 605 in the leg press and that was just like, I would have never done that on my own. For those wanting to work out with Rogers, they're in for a rigorous 15 minutes in the gym. For client Lexi Sherman, the high intensity sessions are trademark of Chosen Uno. What's it like when you get in the gym for a Chosen Uno training workout? What's the vibe? What's the atmosphere? I would say it's very like go, go, go. Like he doesn't let you rest at all. Like it's on to the next exercise in 10 seconds. Rogers grew up training with former Gamecock wide receiver Chaps Dawkins. Now, Rogers is helping Dawkins train for Pro Day in March. Stem is really helping me with the 225 test. Uh, every time we work out in the gym, it's always, we always mention 225, this is how many times I can get it, and um, hopefully I can knock out a good number, and I'll definitely dedicate that to him. Mm -hmm. Almost two years from the start, Rogers is going strong, but in the beginning, Rogers only knew he was taking a chance. What were your expectations when you started back a couple years ago and versus now? Um, when I started a couple of years ago, just like I just mentioned, I was taking a leap of faith. So I really didn't have any expectations for the business. I just knew I was taking a risk and I was trying something new because I knew that I kept getting hurt in football and that the Lord wanted me to do something different. And then now in reality, looking back, Chosen No Trainer has been one of the biggest blessings that I've received so far. The senior is also tight-lipped about the future of his business. What's next for you and your business? Um, what's next for me and my business? Um, let's see. I don't want to spoil anything, but if you stay tuned, we have big things coming soon. For SGTV News 4, I'm Forrest Tucker. Thanks, Forrest. Recently, numerous students were informed that they were being evicted from the Riverside apartment complex via an email. Where will they end up now? News 4 reporter Cade Crenshaw is here with the details. Cade, Imagine being evicted through an email. Well, that's the situation that many residents here at Riverside Community are now facing. They emailed us on Wednesday and told us that we needed to be out by the weekend. Olivia Countess is among a number of individuals who received an email last week informing them that they would be forced to relocate from their current residence to Riverside's sister community, the Village of Columbia. Yeah, basically, after that, we just started calling them and they were just like, yeah, that's all we can do is tell you that you have to get out. Countess says the reason she was forced to move is still unclear to her. They said plumbing issues, but when I went in to ask, they didn't give me like a clear answer. Riverside management issued this official statement to SGTV, saying, quote, Riverside is committed to maintaining safety, comfort, and a high quality of living for our residents. Occasionally, we are required to perform maintenance or repairs that require extensive and potentially disruptive renovations to some apartment homes during the school year, end quote. From the outside looking in, however, Countess says that Riverside isn't what it seems. And I know some people had holes in their ceilings. Um, our shower sounded like it was screaming at you, like there was something just wrong with it, and like... The dryer barely worked. I mean, there was tons of times where we would have to like call maintenance and be like, hey, can you fix this? And like sometimes they would and other times they just wouldn't at all. We decided to check out their website and found this portion saying that Riverside provides well-built and well-maintained residences and also that their residents get more for their money. But Countess has a different take. But it wasn't great and I guess I should have known because it was so cheap. Um, but I don't know, you get what you pay for. Reporting from Riverside Apartments, Cade Crenshaw, SGTV News 4. Thanks, Cade. Coming up after the break, we'll turn to this week's entertainment news. Don't go anywhere. <coughs> <coughs> Good morning and welcome to What's Going On. Welcome to Friday Morning Live. I'm Caitlin Ashball and this is News Rep, where we highlight this Behind every great story. news organization to Columbia, is a team. 99, highest in the Hello, state. Welcome to Carolina Calendar, coming to you from the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio. Keeping a team of producers. A team of anchors. 
Janelle Burton for armed robbery. Earlier this week, rumors stirred that President Kaslin was looking to reporters. Why they chose to participate in such a worthy cause. All of 2022. But behind me, President. one of those well known traditions on campus. From the Tiger Burn to playing the Sands. But we're not just a team. It's like my life in the future. I know, I know. You worried now, but for the first day of fall. We're a family. keeps you closer. Welcome back to Friday Morning Live. We're here with Meredith McIntyre with some entertainment news. Thanks, Kaylee. Watch out, Baby Yoda fans. Disney just announced a release timeline for season two of The Mandalorian. The second saga of the popular Star Wars spinoff is set to be available in mid-October on Disney+. CEO Bob said Tuesday in the quarterly earnings meeting that the series has been a huge success for the platform, and executives speculate that The Mandalorian is one of the key factors in Disney Plus surpassing 28 million subscribers. I'm not a big fan of Star Wars, yeah. so really? I can't say this excites me. I've never me. seen Star no Wars way. before. You've never seen? No, no. I know, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Guys, I don't. Uh, I'm going to have to yeah, go. Yeah, I'm going to head out now. <laughs> what about Baby Yoda? Like, is he so cute? The picture is really cute, but that's I've the only thing I'm interested in. I've been seeing the pictures floating on social media, but I have to be honest and say I don't know what it's about. <laughs> Guys, yeah. I'm even in like a little Baby Yoda Facebook group chat. I don't know <laughs> if I should say that. If that makes me weird, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. A little bit. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, anyways. <laughs> What's up next? <laughs> Singing, acting, and modeling, Triple Threat star Selena Gomez is now stepping into the beauty industry. Gomez just announced that she is launching a new makeup line called Rare Beauty in reference to her recently released album titled Rare. Gomez said she's using the name because she believes everyone is unique and rare, and that Rare Beauty is about accepting who you are, something she said everyone hopes that they could do. The line will be launched in partnership with Sephora and will be in stores this summer. I haven't heard Selena Gomez's name in a while, so it's cool to see that she's stepping out with something new. Yeah, an album, oh, yeah. a new beauty line. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. She's doing a lot. Very yeah, she's, excited. she's really doing it all out there, so <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Meredith. After the break, we'll have Kendall Smith here to update us on all things sports. And later, we'll take a look at this week's weather. Stick with us. What's up Gamecocks? I'm Kendall Smith here with what's going on in the world of sports. South Carolina football secured four more recruits on National Signing Day this past Wednesday, but it's not these recruits who have Gamecock fans talking. The nation's number four ranked overall prospect and defensive tackle Jordan Birch of Columbia committed to South Carolina in December. However, on National Signing Day, Birch did not initially send in his national letter of intent to USC. However, late on Thursday night, university social media revealed that Birch had finally submitted his letter. Head coach Will Muschamp said he's looking forward to coaching the quote, explosive athlete and extremely smart player. This coming Monday, the number one ranked South Carolina women's basketball team will host what is arguably their most difficult opponent of the season thus far, the number four ranked UConn Huskies. Last Monday, the Huskies suffered a 74 to 56 loss against the number three ranked Oregon Ducks, bringing their record on the season to 19 and two. 
The Gamecocks, who are 21-1 on the season, are averaging over 80 points per game heading into the matchup against UConn. South Carolina women's basketball has never beaten UConn with the closest deficit between the two being 11 points during a 66-55 loss in 2017. The highly anticipated matchup is set to tip off at 7 p.m. in Colonial Life Arena on Monday. That's all I have for you guys this week. After the break, we'll hear from Bryce Glenn with your weekend weather. Stay close. Ja, da, da, da. Ja, da, da, da. Follow up a painted trail. La, 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 la. Every week. Da, 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 da. I've been hit by da, 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 da. a new performance. That will blow your mind. You're watching the Greenhouse Concert Series on SGTV News 4. Welcome back to Friday Morning Live. We're here with our meteorologist, Bryce. Now, I had a Wizard of Oz experience yesterday. Is there still a tornado happening? Uh, no, we, we're not expecting any tornadoes as of right now. We didn't have any about any last night, but in the upstate, there was one that came across and actually hit some houses, from what I'm understanding. But today, we will be windy again, clear and windy, and it's going to be very windy with sustained winds of up to 20 miles an hour. We have mostly clear weekend ahead of us, cooler temperatures all week through the weekend and into the beginning of next week, but more rain is on the way for Tuesday and Wednesday. Our highs today in Carolina, it is lower, I hate to say again, not, not as high as 70 anymore. We're up at 60, 46 in Greenville, 48 in Rock Hill, 46 in Greenwood. Move down to Florence, we're at 55, 51 in Columbia, 53 in Sumter, 48 in Aiken, 51 in Orangeburg. Along the coast here, a little bit warmer, 57 in Myrtle Beach, 55 in Charleston, and in Hilton Head. Right now in Columbia, it's currently 51 out there, right around our high. We have winds of 21 miles an hour plus. Don't forget about those gusts, though. We're going to have gusts of upwards of 35 miles an hour. Our humidity is 60%. We have some clouds here and there out there, mostly windy with a rain chance that is very low. Our weather this week, like I was saying, today we're going to be breezy at 55. Saturday, there's some clouds will show up. We're going to be mostly sunny, though, at 56. Sunday, it's only sunny at 60. We're going to jump up with that temperature on Monday to 69. Partly sunny out there. Tuesday, we're going to have some showers again at 70. Same idea Wednesday. Some showers also with a high of 70. Yeah, it looks like we have every type of weather this week. Starts out cool, <laughs> then warms up. Exactly, exactly. And I thought the groundhog had said that it was an early spring, not a wet one. Yeah, well, our temperatures like are it. rising a little bit. You know, we can give them, give them some leeway there. I just wish it wouldn't fluctuate as much. Exactly. So. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got for you this week, Gamecocks. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Friday Morning Live. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at SGTV News 4 to keep up to date on all things USC. For SGTV News 4, I'm Allie Catone. I'm Bryce Glenn. And I'm Kaylee Olivas. Have a great weekend, Carolina. Forever today. Woo.